Today, I want to talk about something that many people perceive to be quite complicated and I want to keep it simple. So today's video is keeping something that could be complicated as simple as possible. From the outset, let's make it clear, this video is really aimed at people who might not know too much about this little guy. This is the Raspberry Pi. It's a complete computer with processor, RAM. There's no storage apart from this little micro SD card here which stores the operating system. And you can write different operating systems to this card and it's super easy, it's like two clicks on a piece of software. And then you install it in here like that and then you reboot this thing and it's up and running as a computer. So this is the Raspberry Pi, this is version 3B. You know, you can see it's a computer because it's got four USB ports, it's got an ethernet port, HDMI, it's got a three and a half mil audio out, which sounds, oh, it sounds so bad. <laughs> You can buy this for about 35 euros. Depending upon what operating system we write to this micro SD card determines the functionality streaming wise of this device. We can turn this into a streamer. We can turn this into a UPnP streamer, a Spotify Connect streamer, an AirPlay streamer, um, a Squeezebox emulated streamer, and also a Rune Ready endpoint. So we can do many things just from changing the operating system that sits on here. All we have to do is once the software is installed on this is just use the USB output. This end goes into my DAC here, like that. The other end of my USB cable goes into this. And then we just get a five volt wall wart, which is a power supply. This is a switch mode thing, it's nothing fancy, very basic. So the micro USB socket on the Pi is where we inject power. So this is the most basic streamer. This is a 35 euro and I use it as a rune ready endpoint. And yeah, you can buy a case for this. I'm not showing it with a case here, but you can get a case. So with power supply case and the Pi itself, you're up and running with a, any kind of basic streamer for like 50 euros. This is a functionally wonderful and very affordable device. But we might ask ourselves, well then what's wrong with it? There has to be something wrong with it for 35 euros. The answer is, really in, in the board itself and in the power supply. I mean, this is a noisy power supply, electrically noisy, not acoustically noisy. So it injects like noisy power in here. And we could swap out this power supply for a linear brick, so not a switching brick, but we still have a lot of electrical noise going on here. The USB shares its data bus with ethernet. So if you've got a lot of ethernet traffic, coming in from here, then you're obviously gonna get a lot of noise in here. So it's electrically noisy and then that noise travels out of the USB socket, down the cable, along this cable and into the DAC. So that's a problem. So what do we do about it? This really was not designed with audio nerds like me or you in mind. This was just designed to be functional. It's like an Apple MacBook Air or a, a Surface Pro or something like that. Like a consumer grade PC, it's not designed for low noise to sound great with high-end audio equipment. So if you have a very revealing audio system, you're gonna hear how this digital transport, this streamer, won't sound as good as a high-end streamer. To give an example here, this is the Aurelic Aries Mini. Its USB output here is designed for minimal noise, minimal jitter, it's designed for audio files for better sound quality, and this is not. I think it's quite clear that this oral extrema sounds better than the Raspberry Pi, even though this thing is more flexible. So we need to ask ourselves, is there a way to make the Raspberry Pi sound as good or better than this Aurelic Aries Mini. One way to make the Raspberry Pi sound better is with a hat, which means hardware attached on top. And this is a board made by a third party manufacturer that takes the digital audio from the Yurt Raspberry Pi up into it, converts it into spitter for the outputs via coax or Toslink. And the Toslink will be very useful for what we reviewed last week, the KEF LSX. You attach this hat to this 40 pin riser on the Raspberry Pi, the audio is sucked up from the Raspberry Pi into this top board and then it's processed here. So it's really like a USB spitoff converter for Raspberry Pis, even though it's actually I2S to spitoff. From this point, all I wanna talk about is spitoff. We're no longer in the USB game. We're gonna leave these USB ports on the Pi for just attaching storage for music if we want to. Now our audio outputs are converted to SPDIF. So that makes for a better sounding device. This hat is from a company called Just Boom. It's called their Digi Hat. 
And you can see I've put it in their case. And then all I've got to do now is clip on the top. So now we have a standalone streamer, which is extremely affordable, and we can connect it, Spinoff or Toslink, to our DAC over here. This is a great sounding streamer, but there's something better. This is the Digi One from Allo Digital. They're a French company who manufacture in India, and we don't have a Toslink output here. We have BNC and coax. And again, this is a hat board on top of a Raspberry Pi in a very solid metal case. When I hook this into our audio system, what we have to do is connect a ethernet cable here. This is a coaxial cable. Let me hook it in there. And then this goes into our DAC over here like that. So we have this, again, very affordable streamer, but this one's you know, working in Spidiff. The limitation here is it's 24192, which is really a bit of a non-issue in a world dominated by 1644 CD quality audio. So for me, it's about the hardware, not the format. And this hardware, this sounds quite incredible for the money as a streamer. I run it as a Rune Ready streamer using an operating system called Rupee that's running on the micro SD card slot here. In the interest of keeping sound quality descriptors simple, remember this is a simple video for beginners, I'm just gonna talk about better, worse, or the same, really, when it comes to sound quality of this Digi One streamer. For me, using Spidoff only, this Digi One sounds better than this Aurelic Aries Mini. Not by a lot, but it sounds better. The big thing here is that this is cheaper than the Aurelic streamer, and it's also cheaper than this modified Sonos Connect from Wide for Sound. It's on the same level of performance, of sound quality. But again, we're talking about Spidoff. Now, for those of you going, well, what about Sonore Micro Rendu? Well, I can't tell you about that because Maybe my Brooklyn DAC over here, maybe it's USB input is not as proficient as it's Spidiff. Spidiff to Spidiff with the same cable. So I'm using an AudioQuest Carbon Spidiff cable for these comparisons. So with this Allo Digi One streamer, we've still got two boards in here and the Raspberry Pi is in the bottom. It sends I squared S digital audio up onto the top board, which is the Allo board. It converts it to Spidiff and spits it out like this. But because there's a direct connection between those two boards, the noise that's generated by the Raspberry Pi or the power supply that comes in over micro USB, noise can still travel up through that 40 pin connector that joins the two together and it can travel from the bottom to the top and still pollute the spit-off board. What do we do about that? And that's a question that Allo have been asking for the last 12 months and they have come up with a solution and therefore a new product. The new product is called the Digi One Signature. Back to a Raspberry Pi. Let's go back to basics, that's what Allo did. They realized they can't modify this board and noise can travel up through this 40 pin riser into their Digi One board. So what they've done is their new Digi One signature comprises two boards, these guys here. Let's talk about the first board. This is something that they call the dirty board because it connects directly to this riser here, This this 40 pin socket. All this, this dirty board does is it takes the digital audio up, so the I squared S comes up into here and it converts it using this chip into Spidiff. And then you can see there's another socket here and that's for the top board to connect to. This is the dirty board, but before I can put the top board on, I need to put these risers on like this. These are just like spaces that stop it from collapsing. Connect these together like that. And you can see that they are connected. This dirty board is direct connected to the Raspberry Pi, the noisy Raspberry Pi. It sucks up the digital audio over I squared S, uses the WM8805 chip to convert it to Spidiff, and then passes it up through this connector. But these two boards, the clean and the dirty board, are electrically isolated. So that means the noise cannot travel any further, just the signal comes up and that brings us to our second point of, you know, because you're probably wondering, well, okay, if you can't get power up from below, how do you power this top clean board? Well, what happens is you've got two different power inputs here. These are USB-C. So we connect a power brick to this one to power the top board, and then a power brick to this one to give power to the dirty board, which in turn sends it down to the Raspberry Pi as well. 
This section is independently powered of this section on the top. Just to kind of recap, this top board is now electrically isolated from everything below and gets independent power here. What that means is we have two switch mode power supplies, two USB-C connectors, and they just pop into here like this. It's a double power supply situation to keep this clean board clean. But obviously we don't keep this in our hi-fi rack like this, well I don't anyway, and a low can supply an acrylic case for that, so we're gonna put this in the acrylic case before we go any further. This is not the prettiest streamer in the universe. I mean, and it's certainly, this, the Sonos and the Aurelic both look better. But when it comes to sound quality, this Allo Digi One signature streamer has it all over all of these streamers on this table right now. So how does this Digi One signature sound compared to the other streamers we've been looking at today? Well, compared to the original Digi One, the Digi One signature is better. It gives me more detail, but it's better. And therefore it's also better than this Aurelic Aries Mini. But what's really surprising is that this Digi1 signature to me sounds better than this Sonos modified by Wired for Sound. This is the original um, Digi1 streamer. And in its metal case, this is nice. I like this case. I don't like the plastic, this, this kind of plastic acrylic case that the signature comes in. But I believe, I believe that Allo are working on a metal case for this signature version. It's not there yet, it's not ready yet. So you can take the protective film off this, obviously, it just takes a long time. To me, it doesn't improve it all that much. I tend to keep this streamer tucked away out of sight because I'm just interested in its sound quality and its functionality. I don't really worry too much about how it looks because it can sit behind a DAC or an amp with a DAC built in. So you would think, okay, that's it. This is better than those two more expensive, um, more professional looking streamers, but this is not the end of the story. There is a wrinkle because Allo also want us to consider using batteries to power the clean board. So these are rechargeable life pole batteries. So they go in this charger like this. This charge is about 30 euros. And then we've got these charging information here. So that's C4, slot C1, 40%. These are all 40%. It's a battery pack. They're rechargeable. It runs for about 12 hours with the four in here like this. So all we gotta do is just hook that into the clean side. So we lose one of the switch mode bricks, that goes away. And so now we're powering the dirty side with a switch mode brick, it doesn't really matter because it's the dirty side. But then the clean board gets this battery power. Like that. So then we got this one here, single battery pack for the clean side and this switch mode for the dirty side. So that goes plus in there like that. Plus in there like that. And then plus in there like that. Plus in there like that. <gasps> what the f So you have to be very, very careful with this battery pack and <laughs> put the batteries in the right way. Otherwise you're gonna end up with a small fire as we just had here and we had to stop filming because you can see the signage here says plus towards the nodule here and the minus towards the spring. But on this side, the plus goes towards the spring. And if you follow this side, then you're gonna have, basically this pack lights up, literally lights up with a flame. So you gotta be so careful with this battery pack. I mean, I don't know why, I don't know how this even, you know, is being sold on the internet, I really don't know. So this is the minus end of the battery, it goes in here like this, on this side, This we're good on this side, the minus here, and I think we can just use these two batteries on their own. I would caution people against putting two batteries on this side because 
yeah, you might just have uh, a very hot, fiery thing in your hands as we just had. It didn't burn the table, thankfully. <laughs> Safety issues aside, if you can get a battery pack like this that is completely safe and you can work it properly, then you're going to really reap some very real dividends in terms of sound quality because with the battery powering the clean board on this Digi1 Signature Streamer, sound quality goes up by quite a bit. Everything gets a bit squidgier and a bit more elastic and, you know, like things sound just a lot nicer and fatter and chewier, so not as clean and as streamlined and as rigid. Um, so really, I mean, with the battery pack, this puts even more daylight between it, its sound quality, and these two streamers. What's also really interesting is that with this battery pack safely hooked up to the clean board, I rate this Digi1 signature as better than this Aurelic Aries with the linear power supply. The sound quality is better. So in Denver at the Rocky Mountain Audio Fest this year, I gave a seminar with Michael Lavonia talking about how high-end streamer manufacturers need to be very worried about the Raspberry Pi. The company that makes the Raspberry Pi is called Raspberry Pi. So they've developed this, the, the main board down the bottom. And then the operating system, which sits on the micro SD card in here, that's all community developed. So there's no cost to a low there at all, nor with the Raspberry Pi. All a low have to do is develop this audio board, or these, in this case, these two audio boards, and concentrate on lowering jitter, lowering noise, making the spit of output as clean and as orally satisfying as possible, and they're onto a winner for very little money indeed. And together with this, and I think when this comes out in a metal case, it'll be something very nice indeed to look at. It's quite clear that the jump from the Digi1 to the Digi1 signature are lower, not standing still with their development. So who knows what's going to happen in the next iteration and the next iteration. If I was in the business of making a $2,000 digital streamer, I would be quite worried about the Raspberry Pi. Just have to make sure you get that battery pack sorted properly and safely. So be careful out there, folks.